far. But here we have our highlighted players. Hugo from the one, the legendary melee player and offlaner, and dancing, Hanzo Mastermind. That he is. He is an absolute expert on those ranged assassins. Currently second in the overall KDA count. I think he's only topped by Druid, his teammate and fellow yeah. support. Although we do not have an updated version of that, but exactly. we assume that is still the same. I'll ask for one for the mm -hmm. final day. Or for, I'll ask for one for playoffs. Yeah. That seems like something we can use effectively. As we start off, we can see <laughs> maps banned from the first time these teams went up against each other. And we're starting off with Dragonshire. Man, we've had a lot of Dragonshire today, haven't we? Almost mm -hmm. every match, almost every series is uh, going to take us to that battleground sooner or later. But we're not complaining. Personally, I'm a big fan of Dragonshire. Definitely one of the more fun maps to play and watch. Uh, but of course, to each their own. Can't wait to see what we're going to have in game number two. But first things first, BTG. They like to run the Zarya every now and then. But it all depends on the map and the composition that they want to run in the first place. That it does. So, Hammer banned out. The Genji banned out. We'll likely see probably the one banning the Maev. I think the BTG will probably ban. Maybe Deckard a Diablo, Deckard. I think Deckard's probably a better call because mm -hmm. Druid's still pretty comfortable on other stuff as well. It's going to be White Main. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, they're basically threatening the one here. Tick picking the Deckard away, and you see that young man on the bottom right here right now, ZJZ, man. We labeled him the best Deckard in the league for a reason, and immediately that hero does not fall into his hands. Now, he does have more heroes available, of course. Not sure if they're listening to music, by the way, or if uh, they're just uh, having a good time all together, like both. Maybe. I mean, the game has some pretty dope draft music. <laughs> That is true. It's just fascinating because both Dancing and ZJZ are, you know, weaving their heads. Now then, the Phoenix and the Thrall come in for the one. So we've got that potential Earthquake Salvo combo. And if not, Sundering's still pretty freaking good in terms of uh, fight control and domination. There's the Urel being picked up here and the Rainer. So Diablo just being abandoned by both these teams up to now. Yeah, Diablo all of a sudden doesn't really have the highest of priority anymore. And I think it all comes down to the fact that both Warriors, 619 on the side of BTG and Huhu on the side of the one, they are so flexible and not necessarily the most notorious of Diablo players. Both like their Nubarak a lot, both excel on Muradin, and both are pretty scary Dia uh, Garrosh players as well. So I still think we're going to see a Diablo ban here after all, but it could even be that Muradin ban, or maybe even Anubarak. I, at this point, seeing Anubarak succeed over and over again is actually considering or considerable to uh, to ban sometimes. Yeah, especially seeing as Hoho has been one of the yeah. biggest uh, biggest perpetrators of that Anubarak success. But we're actually going to go with a different hero here. The Blaze being stolen mm -hmm. away here from Soap. And that's pretty fair. It's pretty fair. It also makes team fighting a whole lot easier for BTG if they want to go for some kills because they won't have to uh, worry about the bunkers anymore. But the same can be said about the one all of a sudden. So oftentimes when you ban the blaze in China, you're not necessarily sure, like, are we doing us a favor or the enemy team as well? Karazim and the Diablo comes out. So the potential for big burst coming in now we've got sundering got phoenix got mm -hmm. kerosene with seven-sided strike diablo is the setup and engage for all of that he's probably one of the best setups for a burst uh composition these days so makes a lot of sense to see that pop up 43 percent win rate diablo's still working his way through the heroes here as we do in fact see a new but this time by btg yeah, 619 back on that hero against Diablo. Now, are they going to run that Thrall as a soul laner, which they could do? Or are they going to go for another ranged? In that case, they could even yeah. send Phoenix into the soul lane as well. I mean, I'm going to look at I look at this and I'm like, who needs a hero? It could be Hugo and there's a Malfail available, which could be mm. pretty clutch. No, it is going to be Hugo on that Thrall and mm -hmm. Hanzo comes out for dancing. Yeah, even more damage. Sorry, so, for Meng, sorry. I yeah, can, Meng is probably going to play Hanzo Keshi on his Phoenix again. Now, we haven't really seen a whole lot of Meng Hanzo, if you will. He's normally the type of guy that likes to go for those big, flashy mobile heroes like Genji. 
uh, Li yeah. Ming, right? That's normally right up his alley. The Maev as well. What can he do with a Hanzo? We will be finding out shortly. As for now, though, we await for the loading in of the map. So far, looking at these drafts, I really, the classic Li Ming and Nubrak is always good, always welcome. I'm concerned by the only Diablo frontline, but Diablo into Dragon Arrow is a classic mm. combo that has worked repeatedly throughout the months we have been ca uh, casting this. M uh, I guess this, when was that? Hanzo was released this year, right? I'm not being crazy, right? Uh, dude, uh, was Hanzo at last BlizzCon? No, wait a minute. He was, was revealed he was last, announced BlizzCon. last BlizzCon. There so, we yes. go. So I was right by saying in the months we have been casting, yeah. the Diablo into Dragon Arrow has been very effective. So cool to see that. Cool to see that combo coming in. So I do quite like that. It feels like he's been around for such a long time because he's always been in the meta despite several nerfs. I mean, it doesn't help that we have four seasons to so like everyone else's two. So <laughs> yeah, that's probably why everything feels so long to us quite a lot. As we are preparing to head into the game, what's going to win here? The more standard uh, disruption <laughs> and annoyance comp of BTG, or the burst comp of the one. BTG have 619, LLK, Druid, Dancing, and Loktar. Facing them is the one with Hugo, Keshi, Meng, ZJZ, and Huhua on the Diablo there. I was waiting for that camera angle, by the way. Our Chinese observers, they love to give us these uh, moody, you know, opening shots. And the Fisherman yeah. on Dragonshire is a classic. Indeed. You gotta get through that. Have they done the fish fountain? I'm pretty sure they have. I'm pretty sure they have at some point, yeah. Net Pagel uh, leaked. Next hero. Yes, this is confirmed. Or <laughs> Nat Pagel a stitches skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ha! Club one. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine a big oversized uh, Nat Pagel? <laughs> just no, no, no. He's not oversized. He's just in his boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's normal size. It's just the boat is the hitbox. All right. <laughs> I wouldn't hate that. You could actually uh, do that with the Vikings as well if you do the longboat raid. Just three pagels? Yeah. <laughs> How would you do that? Oh, man. We just spammed the And then they're going to be line. caught one, caught one, caught one, caught one the, the entire yeah, time. You hit, you hit it and instead of, like, the so instead of the song, it's just, I can wait and fish all day. Exactly. All right. Now we're getting a little crazy. That sounds, so. like, a, sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> As we do see the lanes being cleared up. Very calm early game, but with a lot of rotations coming in from the one and BGG. But no one going in for any particular hard engages, hard dives yeah. as of yet. Also, can I just say, someone was uh, describing heroes earlier on in chat. And the description, Brightwing combines the beauty and grace of Tyrande with the lunacy of Junkrat and the madness of Butcher is the best description for a hero I've seen in a long time. So thank you, That's poetical. Pinsel. Yeah, thank you, Pinzel. That's a cool, cool description. Yeah, I mean, I mean, our community here, the viewers and uh, the HCC China fans, they've been on fire today, posting on Reddit, sending us tweets that I retweeted already yeah. earlier, then dropping us poems as well. Fantastic. You guys are making this broadcast a much more pleasant one. So thank you very much for interacting and uh, getting involved. Completely agree. As we see the one pushing into the top lane, they've already taken down a tower, but Loktar has come in to assist. Bats back Hugo as they try to finish him off, but he actually dodges the scroll of ceiling. Nicely done. Being very patient with his micro back, even though he was in danger. So a nice little retreat there. As the one, they are quite fine to settle for a single tower. I think that wizard mercenary gave us so, or gave the one so much value there. In that onslaught where so many abilities had been used already onto the one, I think the damage mitigation there really saved uh, a lot of lives there, especially Hugo who found himself in a pickle. For now though, look at Anubrek going in aggressively yet again. Now Phoenix is going to try and chip down his health, but Druid has a word or two to say about that. Both teams actually really respecting uh, each other's power level here, I feel. None of the teams is actually brave enough to go for these all-in crazy teamfight moves that we're used to seeing when other teams play. Speaking of which, we might have actually cursed it. The Ming actually dodging the Ming's combo. Beautifully done. Gets rooted, though. Yeah, dropping down, able to escape. It's Ming. The importance yeah, of gates. Grab the fountain. The importance of gates, indeed. It's not very healthy, but it's alive, and that's the important <laughs> bit. Able to block a skill shot or two. As we see an immediate commitment by Anubarak to buy Deckard some time as he begins to channel. Dodge the Fire Stomp, he does, and that's going to be the first Dragonite of the game. Going over to Beyond the Game, see ya! 
but we also see the Anubrak going down. Yeah, it looks to me like Huhu realized that he didn't have Shadow Charge anymore, that he didn't have any other abilities uh, ready anymore. The Fire Stump barely missed the Decker Kane, who was busy channeling the Dragonite. But with Deckard sitting in that Dragonite, he was no longer able to save a new break. So they trade the Dragonite for a kill there. A little bit of mercenary pressure as well in the bottom lane. And already with combined efforts and without a healer on the other hand, uh, on the other team, sorry. Uh, I don't think this Dragonite will get much more done in the middle at least. Maybe they're going to get some more towers in the top lane though. Let's find out. It's on its way up. Still got 35% health. 20 seconds. Should be able to take down at least one tower in theory. But Thrall could also bully it quite effectively. Loktar dancing and Ho Ho. So, uh, sorry, not Ho Ho. And Anubrak soaking the lane here. Keeping it safe as Ho Ho is cleaning out the lane. 619. Looks to maybe gank Hugo. He was visible this entire time though. So unsurprisingly, that did not work. Yeah, that didn't go too well at all, but he completed the uh, wolf pack level four, which is always nice to see. Um, now, mana cost and cooldown on his Feral Spirit are reduced, which makes uh, for great synergy at level 16 as well for the Alpha Wolf, if you want to go for that additional percentage damage. But I guess in Uberang, I don't think that is necessarily uh, needed. On the Urel, ah, you know, when you have an Urel in the mix, I guess you could still go for it. Otherwise, personally, I'm still a big fan of Thunderstorm, even with Echo of the Elements, because although you have to spam your Lightnings way more frequently, that also allows you to get more damage done, as long as you don't cast it on the same target twice. And it does. So now, ho <laughs> ho keeping a sort of scouting area without actually seeing anything. It's an interesting position he was in. I think what he hoped was that BTG, if they were going to invade, did, wouldn't check that bush, so that therefore they wouldn't see him in there. They'd mm -hmm. march in, think Diablo wasn't there, and he could then just tackle them through the wall. Didn't happen, either way. So as such, the one now just could be able to push in with this Bruiser camp, while Reyna, for his team, grabs a Siege Giant camp to use for the defense. Strong damage onto Phoenix from over the oh wall here. God, LLK on sniping duty. Gets the reset. Misses his second shot, though. Is he going to get more damage done onto Hu Hu? Nice knockback. Nine, through it. Hu Hu gets knocked up. Taken down. Good tackle, but the borrow charge is too good. ZJZ down as well, even after the attempted dash. And that is going to be BTG taking control. Man, what a massacre there. It's planned from start to finish. Really, you could see how LLK was trying to get maximized value onto Phoenix, who was in the perfect angle. And they're not done yet dismantling this bottom lane. Hanzo, sometimes you need to know when to retreat, friend, especially when your allies already died or uh, were in other lanes. So make it a quad kill after all, I believe. Yes, four kills on the side of BTG. And all of a sudden, this game got way more explosive. That it did, as the one move in for the mercenary camp, just giving away this Dragon Knight to BTG due to the fact that Hanzo was not yet back with them. This was the safer move. And that Bruiser Camp might help de-push the Yorel a bit. But Hulhul's going to have to back up. Otherwise, he could be in danger of 619. But this is, at minimum, going to be this bottom fort. The yeah. question is, where does the Dragon Knight go from there? Does it move up to mid? Do they try and take that down? Or is it all about keeps now? Hmm. I mean... We got to take a look at how much Dragon Knight damage there is available for the ones. The Seven Sider works on that too. Uh, it deals pretty pretty nice extra damage onto the Dragon Knight if uh, all seven hits go onto it. But other than that, I don't think there's a whole lot available. Karzim is actually still in the middle. ZJZ trying to soak a little bit more here. Needs to be careful though. Can't get wrapped into the cocoon. The fort dropping low. Li Ming should be able to finish that off. But the Dragon Knight doesn't want to risk it though, by the looks of it. It's going to back up entirely. That four could be saved for later. Diablo being delivered to the other side of the map. And as such, Dragon Knight will expire. Yeah, but really good patience by the one. Oftentimes you will see teams recklessly engage into a Dragon Knight. But what happens then, or what could happen, I should say, is that oftentimes a Dragon Knight will punt away the main initiator. Uh, ideally the warrior or an offlaner. And all of a sudden that whole momentum that the enemy team thought they had comes to a halt. And they're going to get re-engaged on. Especially in Dragonshire, there's so many ways where you can punt someone over a wall. It takes them so long to get back to the fray. So a uh, good move by the one waiting patiently when other teams might have committed, fully committed to that. BTG continue to rotate around. Soaking experience for their level 13 is the goal. Once again, they have to be careful though. Even though they are ahead, the one's burst composition now is absolutely terrifying. With that Earthquake, Lightning Breath, Salvo, with Dragon Arrow yep. and the Seven Sided Strike for good measure. So, which is why they are a lot of retreat pings being spanned out. They don't want to get themselves caught out of position. 
That level 13 is still a little bit, a little of a distance away here for the one. They still need a little of time here. Now, I agree with you, Tetra. I think at level 10, this is going to be the real test for Beyond the Game, right? Level 13. Uh, with all those heroic abilities, there is so much wombo combo potential for the one. As you said, the slow effects, the salvo coming in, the lightning breath, that's a lot of damage. So there's going to be a lot of focus on a new brack with that cocoon. You know, can you drop it on the right target at the right time? There's no Li Ming disintegrate because Li Ming's their own team. Rainer needs to be protected as well. Uh, two really good drafts. I think, like, from a drafting point of view, these two teams have done the best job up to this point. Such a close game. I think so. Even though it has been slightly leaning towards BTG, the one's draft looks solid and has the potential to come back at any point. Both these teams are performing very well in this game. It's certainly a smoother looking BTG that we have seen That's in the sure. last yeah. couple days. That's for sure. And if, if BTG continues to play this well, you know, not really giving their opponents any chance to come back, not really making any mistakes themselves, then I think they're in a good shape to actually take that series. And if they take that series, I take back everything I said earlier, and I will refer to them as the best team in the region again. They move forward. BTG with a Bruiser Camp and a Siege Giant Camp looking to make some pressure. How That's a lot of damage. Not very by the looks of it. Just going to let this go, let the camp be a distraction, and try and make a play elsewhere. Good demount by Ho Ho. Mm -hmm. Yurel's already on the way top. Looks like this is going to be a distraction slash Dragon Knight attempt. Yeah, of course, Hanzo does have that global range on his Dragon's era, but he doesn't have level 20 yet, which means... Wait, are they... Okay. That was a little bit of a mistake here by the one, but you could really see uh, how that bottom lane was occupied by mercenaries over and over again. They just couldn't move out in time. Now, here's a big, juicy cocoon on Diablo. Is there going to be enough? Oh, no. This oh, is, this is bad mistimed. News. Hanzo. Oh, Hanzo. No, sorry. Not mistimed. Misaimed. Hanzo not able to land a dragon yeah. arrow, but it's still enough dissuasion to let Hoho escape. Yeah, I think uh, Beyond the Game was a little hesitant there to really go in for an all-out fight on that Bridge of Doom and Death, as many people refer to it. Um, so yeah, lucky in the way that uh, the location was in favor of the one. Otherwise, if, the, if that had happened in the bottom lane, for example, that might have been a whole different fight. Also, 16 is now here. BTG is retreating, trying to look for a better terrain to fight on. The Dragon Knight continues pressuring in here, for her, waiting for his moment. Sidewall is destroyed. I think he was hoping someone melee would run up to it to punch it, but that does not happen. Instead, he puts himself in a little bit of danger. Has to pull back. Right, There's a punt onto Karazim. He is out of the question for the moment, which means BTG could keep pushing a little bit if they want to, but they decide to back it up. They back it up. They got the tower lane. They got the 16. Keep in mind that during an actual team fight, the Dragonite is not as valuable as a Li Ming. So that is probably the reason why we see BTG so hesitant. Now we do have still that advantage going, and Ubrek is going mighty deep here. Maybe he overstayed it a little bit. Now we get saved here. 619 tanking through, gets his armor applied, and they're able to move forward, looking to put some extra damage onto the towers. They do so with the greatest of ease, and keep creeping forward. And that, these Siege Giants, obviously this doesn't have the Bruiser Cam they had last time, so they're just going to back up for what, even once the minions arrive. They know they can't go too much further. Good demount by Hanzo. Able to get both Druid and LLK there. Yeah, Beyond the Game is playing this really slowly and really methodically. Gone are the days in which they go for team fights over and over again, like we've seen it against RPG. They realize that the one is such a formidable team. Only one mistake could be the last of it. BTG once again trying to go for that Anubrak engage, but while he was burrow charging, he realized, you know what, that's not going to work. So I'm better canceling it right here right now however i do want to say this they don't have an unlimited amount of time the one eventually is going to get 16 as well and if they do that without getting a key for btg they might actually have regretted that patience because with 16 the one can definitely fight back they move forward looking for this keep in the mid lane like you said 16 around the corner but they have to hold this keep somehow for enough time to soak it they have looks like managed to do it once again so the one keep that keep alive and they move out into the lane grab some experience and 16 will be available in time for this shrine phase yeah call it lack of killer instinct call it uh respect for their opponents whatever you want to call it uh, BTG is playing this very slowly. They do have, of course, another chance to stall it out for the level 20s. 
But the one, I think, is now going to act a lot more aggressively. Now that 16 is so close, they're going to have a massive power spike with that. Cleansing touch at level 16 for Karzi, most likely. There it is. So that means they're now going to be able to handle all those stuns, all those crowd control effects from Decker Kane and Anubarak much more uh, easily. We see the piercing uh, bow here, by the way, coming in from Hanzo. Way more damage yeah. now available for him as well. That's going to be effective. So he begins moving forward with the rest of the team as the one seriously trying to make the most out of that. Mm -hmm. That was a cleansing touch used by Karazim a little bit early. I think he thought a Hulha would make a, was going to get engaged on, but instead it's just one less dash, but those recharge pretty quickly. Yep. Banji a little bit too far in. Doesn't take a whole lot of damage though. Speaking of taking damage, Hulha is brought down considerably low here. Karazim not the strongest you know, sustaining support, but with those returning flames, he brings himself up back into this good shape. It's a constant back and forth, poking and re-poking. None of the teams is willing to make any big moves up to this point. Look at the top lane, though. That's a big momentum swing for Beyond the Game. If they wait patiently, that already weakened top lane could see and take some fatal damage, potentially. And that could be good news if they can take down that keep. That's consistent pressure in that top lane that they already control, might I add. And with level 18, almost 19 available for BTG, yeah. to keep going down would be a big boost towards level 20. All right, how much time does the one have left? They take control over that bottom shrine. Top is completely under control for BTG. There's two mercenaries, sorry, one mercenary camp available for them right now, the Siege Giants. And fighting in those choke points near the Siege Giants, I think would actually be amazing for the one. So they could even try to lure their opponents into that terrain. Because with Lightning Breath, Earthquake, Salvo, they have so many uh, AoE Wombo Combo tools that fighting a choke point with Diablo as well, of course, slamming people into those walls would be very much appreciated for them. So then, we see 619 moving forward. Quick knockup in the armor applied by Loctar. They're a little bit scared. This Hanzo mm -hmm. damage is starting to get pretty high now, thanks to, like you said, those piercing arrows. Yeah, but eventually the one is going to run out of time here because time favors BTG. They're so much closer to level 20 uh, than their opponents. So if they don't find an angle, guess what? They don't really care about it. They also have three forts that they can fall back to. Uh, sorry, two. The bottom one has been destroyed already. But they have two forts, two lanes that they can fall back onto safety. That was actually used against the Raider here, I think, of Rainer. So not a serious engage by Huo Huo. Keep hopping around L. Okay. This is why you don't face check kids. If he moved out without doing yeah. that, he would have been caught. But in this case, he does survive. Hovers around the area. Still no rotation from the one to top lane. The longer they wait on this, the closer BTG will get to level 20. Yeah, this game is so intense right now. Both teams are waiting for a mistake of their opponents, right? Both teams realize, you know what? All it takes is one team fight, especially BTG could greatly capitalize on a victory because all three keeps are almost exposed there. Level 20, so close. What does that mean? Rewind on a new break, more lockdown potential. Rainer potentially going for the upgraded uh, Banshee, the Duskwing. Decker Kane, more cubes. Sorry, more um, gems. 619 channels in the bottom altar. Thrall, Hugo grabs the top one. Both teams, once again, just dancing around the issue, but the one have run out of time to dance. Yeah. 20 is already on the line for BTG. Actually, I take that back. The one, all they can do is dance now because they can't afford to get caught out with level 20 available for beyond uh -oh. the game. They are a half a level. This was an overextension by Hugo, but they don't dive. Wow, I totally would have thought 619 would go for it. When do you see Chinese teams, especially BTG, so passive and so, you know, respectful yeah. of their opponents? That was crazy. It makes me question if they even saw him, whether he like skirted the outside. Oh, you mean of because vision. of vision range? Maybe yeah. just on the border. Yeah, you're right. If that is the case, then that was freaking amazing. <laughs> All right, Jamie. Oh, you don't want to be the first one in the rotation. You want to wait for your tank to go and dancing in trouble. Lighty gets breath. healed. Phoenix in the cocoon. Which means he can't follow up on this with the Apple already down. See ya, Hugo. That is aggressive as Leaving looks for recess. Lord Nado. Oh, dear poor Keshi. He gets deleted with the entire Lord Nado. Just consistently knocking him back, preventing the teleport. And that's going to be Rainer channeling in the Moon Shrine and the Dragonite. And probably the game going over to beyond the game. 
Yeah, the thing is, I, I think the uh, saving grace for Beyond the Game in that team fight was the fact that, first of all, of course, they were 20, but also I think the one was almost as surprised to run into them there as BTG was, because normally you do not want to have a squishy ranged assassin, you know, leading the charge, leading the rotation, because if you run into a trap, uh, Diablo can lock you down, nail you down. But as it is, ladies and gentlemen, it was a relatively passive game here, but in the end, after 18 minutes and 40 seconds, BTG is marching towards the core of the one, and I think there's nothing they can do. Two of their DPS are still in the Hall of Storms here. Only Thrall is re uh, responding now. That Dragonite doesn't even take yeah. any damage. GG, BTG takes game number one. Game number one for Beyond the Game. Can they keep it up? But that was a convincing performance. One of the most convincing we have seen from Beyond the Game. True. It just took them two weeks to get back there.